Thousands of Iowa State students and their families are preparing tonight to move back into the dorms, but moving in is going to look a lot different next month than it has in past years, as you might imagine. Here to talk about how the university aims to keep everyone safe during a pandemic is Peter Englin, Associate Vice President for Campus Life. Peter, thanks for being with us. Oh, thank you for the opportunity. We know the university has outlined an extensive move in process for students and their families. It includes on site testing, limiting uh, who can help a student move in and when they can move in and more. But of course, we know a lot of people are going to be in the mix. there, moving in and out of those dorms. How can you try to ensure that coronavirus doesn't spread? Yeah, thanks for that question. Um, well, first off, we want to make sure that the spaces where folks are moving in, each residence hall and each apartment has a unique characteristic. And so we've um, mapped each building to limit the numbers that are moving into that building at any one time to re eliminate the possibility of folks not being able to practice the six foot um, physical distancing. Uh, so they'll arrive at uh, Lead Recreation Center. They'll, uh, they'll get their testing, they'll get their keys, they'll proceed to their um, check-in place. They'll be allowed to have two helpers get their items up to the room. They're limited to an hour. Um, and then they're to, to move uh, uh, their vehicles away and, and let the next set of students come in. Um, so we're really uh, requiring face masks. We're limiting physical distancing. Uh, and, and those are the two big strategies during the move in, coupled with the testing. And so we'll uh, also eliminate the possibility of roommates coming in on top of each other in the beginning. There's a 24 hour break between the testing process. Okay, what, what happens in the event that uh, someone on campus, someone involved in the move in or the move out does have COVID-19 and, te and tests positive, that's probably got to trigger a bunch more things, right? Yes, and so we've held um, a building of 150 rooms for isolation, those would be for the COVID-19 positive individuals. And we have a team of our folks with PPE and, and, and ready to um, meet the student at the location they're at now, put their items together in the middle of the room. Um, our team will then help move the student and their items to isolation. And then they'll be connected with our, um, our health center, public health folks, who will then um, start um, monitoring and working with the student. And so uh, we've set up for uh, an isolation case. Uh, we also expect that there will be people that will be exposed to um, positive COVID-19. So we've also set up what's called quarantine in another building. And so folks who um, have been exposed to COVID-19 or are symptomatic for COVID-19, but yet to have a positive test, will have that opportunity and get them out of uh, the general uh, assignment population. Okay. You know, uh, this has to have been quite a summer for you. I mean, this is really a detailed plan, planning for all kinds of eventual outcomes that had just never really been considered before. What What is the planning process for this been like? What has it done to the, the summer for everyone involved in this there at ISU? Yeah, um, Jack, this went back to January uh, when we start to, started to hear about what was happening internationally. We, we then um, look to support our students who are part of the study abroad program. I mean, we've had about five months of experience. Uh, there's been about 130 people meeting daily um, since that time to talk through all the different ways in which we're gonna support students on campus. Um, we've also been talking to our community partners. So the, the mayor, city council, the chamber of commerce. I mean, this has been an Iowa State University, Ames, Iowa, uh, collaborative effort to figure out how to do this as best as possible. All right, well, we know it's a heck of a lot more than anybody bargained for, and we know the students at ISU and their families and everybody connected to the university appreciates all the work that you and your, your group has put in. Peter Englin, Associate Vice President for Campus Life at ISU, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much.